I enforce my strength, my mind strength. That's what's more important to me now. The niggas see that this is not no accident. I plotted every single step from this to this. Right. You know what I mean? Everything is plotted. It's hell that you that the next shit is called Illuminati because that's that's really what the Illuminati is on. That's why I put the K to it. Cause right. I wanted, the niggas is telling me about this Illuminati shit while I'm in jail, right? Like, the dollars, dollars. Right, 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 right. That's another way to keep your self-esteem low. That's that another shit. way yeah. to keep you unconfident. Right. And I'm putting the K because I'm killing that Illuminati shit. Uh -huh. Trust me, if these motherfuckers wanted to kill you, why the fuck they gonna tell Farrakhan? Why they gonna tell the Nation of Islam? Why they gonna tell this nigga in jail about the plan? How did he know? Right, 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 right. How did it leak to him? Who told him? <laughs> Who told him? The Pope? By the next election, I promise, I'm going to be sitting across from all the candidates. I bet you. You know how I'll be making it? I promise you. I'm not even going to be, I'm going to be so far from where I am now in four years. God willing, I'm alive. It's on. I guarantee you, we will, we will have our own political party. And it won't be just for black people. It's going to be for Mexicans. It's going to be for Mexicans. It's going to be for black people. It's going to be for Armenians. I don't give a fuck. All you lost tribe motherfuckers right now, we need to have our own political party because we all have the same motherfucking problem. We built this nation and we get none of the benefits. What's cracking? What's cracking? It's a little easy motherfucking evil Prince of Compton. Firstborn son of the legendary easy evil. What was it like growing up in Compton? Uh, different. <laughs> Real different. Uh, a lot of people sit there and give you off that whole, uh, am I going to get killed if I go in Compton? And, you know, as you look at about a days now, not necessarily, but when I was growing up, it's like literally you go outside and leave the house and you, you get a lot of times when mama's not sure if, you know, your son was coming back either from being in jail or, you know, just shot or dead, you know what I mean? So growing up was kind of tough. I used to tell people it's like, it's like living in a jungle and surviving once you get to my age and able to be blessed to say, you know what I mean, you live born and raised in Compton. I had a lot of individuals from my neighborhood who, who took care of me and, and, and made sure I was all right for my area. You had a lot of individuals who were jealous and, you know, undercutter, undercoverness jealous, you know what I mean, of the things that my father did on different sides of our city you know, whose nephews or sons wanted to get tested and knocked out. So in different in different views, yes, you had a lot of, of uh, you could say, microscopic looks upon myself being his son, yeah. Well, let me give you one. I, I went to school in Long Beach. So, of course, you know, my father, at the time of his passing, had the whole death row Long Beach, you know what I mean, uh, guess you say rivalry going on, industry rivalry, music rivalry. So yeah. as a kid, yeah. As a kid, you know, going to school in Long Beach, I had to deal with that, you know what I mean, and in a lot of different aspects. So, yeah, good and bad, you know, but I handled it. I'm surviving, I'm living, I'm blessed. Early in my career, yeah, I went through some things. Being young and active as these youngsters would say now, I was that way long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, nah, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm all good with everybody and every artist and rapper. You know, if they want a problem, they better do it as a man has said, but nobody wants one. And I don't want no issues to, for anybody that want to have one. The artist that I would want to work with now, but I guess we worked with before and it was actually very, very, it was very positive. It was very good. It was a good output. And I, I, I guess you sit there and say, I like to have unity with, uh, with my city. So I guess one of the rappers will be the game. You know what I mean? I, uh, Kendrick Lamar is an individual that had a lot of respect for me when he came up in his first uh, mixtape. And I always, you know, kept a cool, solid relationship with him. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, I think he's very talented. I think he's one individual that kind of try to drop some, somewhat of knowledge on individuals or, you know what I mean, has a hip hop skill a little above par than some of the average rappers. So I, I like I like his get out. And of course, my nigga that just got out, Lil Boosie. That's who I, that's who I, that's who I, that's who I do, uh, do listen to, you know, I'm not to say he's new, but I do listen to him and, uh, you know, glad to see that he's out from his incarceration, but he's somebody that my city and myself respected as we was coming up. So, you know what I mean? I like to do work with him. Hey, Popson was an uh, uh, artist on Rupus when I was working there. And, uh, I give a lot of respect to him because he was the artist that, uh, that I was working with, uh, to keep on ruthless, you know what I mean? That I was working with from the ground up. And in myself, I was I was very just, you know what I mean, uh, appreciative that I actually did see a vision in a, a real talented artist. Uh, 
but you know what I mean? The mishap he had with me him and my stepmother was what it was, but his frustration as an artist, as a kid, not to be put out at the time or being restricted to certain things he can do. And then, you know, and it's me talking from inside out, you know what I mean? So knowing. Uh, and you know, he took frustration into doing certain songs and you know, a little disc records tore her, you know, it is what it is, you know what I mean? She really doesn't give a fuck. You know, most of us really don't give a fuck, but he's a talented individual that I'm glad to see progress, you know what I mean, to, uh, to where he's at right now, you know what I mean? Because I actually did work with him when he was, you know, real, you know what I mean, fresh, you know what I mean, when he was just barely getting into the game. So I'm happy to see him, you know, his success. Working on my album, a lot of people didn't, didn't think I'd put out this, put out that, and no, I put out one mixtape. You know what I mean? Whatever everybody, anybody else made is to them. But I put out one mixtape, which was Rebirth the Gangster Rap. You know what I mean? A lot of people could go back and listen to that and see what real shit was about back then. And that was some years ago, so, you know, who? You know, um, and then working on my album, my first album, which is going to be titled Yellow Brick Road to Compton. Um, uh, dwelling into the, to the, you know, the movie scene, the film scene. I know everybody knows in the world what's going on. I had a big audition with the NWA movie, which is another trait that I give off the saying why I feel like you know my I gotta push hard for my father because it's been so it's been 20 years 19 years what is it yeah 19 years you know and the movie will be 20 years for him to be just coming out to give a movie to Amish you know what my father did I've been told the difference in me and him in music is maybe so his delivery because he wasn't he, he wasn't out to be a rapper so I'm more out to be you know an executive producer entrepreneur you know I mean the backing to everything and then it came around that they did Boys in the Hood and he put the Lokes on and went in the dark and started rapping. And uh, me more say I can me more so I can say that uh, as a as a youngster having a father who was a rapper you kinda got yourself into uh, you know what I mean the, the, the mode of, of of getting it down to have you know a flow, you know, a style. You know what I mean? So when I record with DOC or I record with DJ Yella that's the difference they tell me that I have with my father. Like, you can rap. Like your father, we used to do take after take or punch after punch because he didn't want to be a rapper. You know what I mean? Like you can actually rap, you know what I mean? And the similarities is just anything from how I move my hand, scratch my leg, anything my grandmother could tell me, which is his mother, anything my uncle could tell me, which is his older brother, you know, his sister, anybody, you know what I mean? It's just, our DJ Yell itself is funny because we was on the road and he'd be like, I, I think I did something like, got a bag of chips and I ate the chips. I took the chips and I folded them and I put them in my pocket. And they just say, damn, your daddy used to do the same thing. Uh, I had a lot of individuals who always look upon and like, hey, you're living in the shadow or you're living this. Like, check this out. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. Half the rappers wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. Half producers wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. There's a lot of people he touched and I'm talking about not just in America itself, but across the world to influence them to sit there and say they can do this or give them that spider, that drive to have the freedom of speech to do the certain things that they do or you know, or, or feel like they can make it. He was more so like like how everybody, oh, Obama made it, Obama made it, any kid can make it. Well, at the time, back in the days, my father was in that, in that, in that aspect where a lot of people felt like, wow, you know what I mean? Because of Easy e I became this individual. Because of Easy e you know, I, I had this house my kids has lived and born and fed in, you know, and raised in, you know what I mean? So they give a lot off to my father. So that is the reason why I do it. There's no other. In a free and open society. And we are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. And there is very grave danger. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its dissent is a silence, not praise. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. But I am asking your help of informing and alerting the American people. Charge. You are. I have no authority over you or anyone else. On the contrary, you have authority over me. Think of me as a spokesperson for all the people of the world controlled by you through social media. Before we get into how that works, let's take a look at this map. Now this is us, a bunch of lines, divisions, boundaries, countries competing for limited resources, economic domination, religious superiority. Competition is healthy when it comes to cricket or Facebook travel pictures, but this, this is just stupid. Let's zoom out and get another perspective. 
To scale, our solar system is a grain of sand in the Sahara Desert, and this little pixel is our only home. Yet we're sucking up resources like there's no tomorrow, breeding like rabbits, strangulating other species out of existence. Plastic waste in the ocean is growing larger than most countries, with nothing in place to stop it. Industries that are harming our planet are so powerful they can prevent or slow down cleaner technology for the sake of short-term profit. Governments, justice systems, the media are all influenced by self-interest groups whose actions often conflict with the well-being of humankind. Obviously, the world is full of a lot of good people, but as a whole, we're contributing to a system that's broken. We're going down a bad path. So, how do we fix it? Together, through social media, we can influence world leaders and industries to start improving the world as opposed to ruining it. We know this will work because history has repeatedly shown 